We're back on it. We are recording. Well, welcome back to a couple conversations. This is episode five. Um, I'm Gingy. That's Tafik. You behind the camera. <laughs> I'm just looking. And we're yeah. very informal here. We're the couple having the conversations. This is it. This is it. Should we should we give them a pan over over what what it is that we're eating? Sure. Yes. This okay. is a beautifully prepared sorbet esque smoothie bowl by smoothie es expert to feed himself. He makes these delicious bowls. Whoa. And today I have to have a smaller one because I am not that hungry. Um, but I love his smoothie bowls. So he was making one. So I was like, mm. I absolutely need to have one. <laughs> and it's sitting on a bed of rose petals. Yes, rose petals from our garden. Um, that my OG green thumb mama really, really takes care of. So these are homegrown roses, homegrown rose petal, and homemade food. Okay, well, I'm just checking that. Um, so today, we got some feedback the other day from a fan, number one fan. She watches our premieres every single week, Sunday at 5. She got the notifications on, so shout out to you. Yep. You know who you are. Um, so we decided that this week, uh, I was going to kind of like let Gingy, you know, kind of take it away. Uh our fan was telling us that she was really taking from Gingy what it means to treat, not or how to treat or how to how to how to give life into her significant other the way that Gingy gives life into me. So it was a learning moment for her. So I'm like, hey, why don't we just do an episode where you're talking about how you give life into me and what it means to you and maybe I'll ask you a question here and there but honestly I'm just gonna be quiet and just sit here and eat and let you talk <laughs> okay so, oh take it away hmm. me pouring life into you well um I feel like it comes naturally um if I I don't even know where to start honestly um, Would it help if I just like started with a question? I think so. Kick me off with a question. I'm going to take a bite of this, and then we'll dive in. Okay. So you said it comes naturally. Um, why, why do you feel it's important to, to feed into somebody, not just me, but in general, why is it important to feed into somebody? Hmm. Why is it important to feed into somebody? Well, if they presented their consistency and worthiness in your life then I feel like it's important for you to nurture that person and show them that you value them it's like a whether that's through verbal communication or action a lot of it comes from action um, at least the way that I receive and perceive as well as uh, give action is very important because people can say whatever but the do is what really matters. Um, yeah, and I think that it's important to just kind of let that person know, like, hey, you're important to me. I see you. You're valued. So, so in what ways do you, do you acknowledge that you support and feed into me? I want you to identify the ways in which you do it. There are probably a lot of ways that you do it that you don't even recognize, but... I'd like to hear what you say. Okay. Mm. I, I ask you how you're doing, how your heart is, 
what you need. Mm. I just like do my little run across the the house when something exciting happens or just when it's been a while and I just pop in and I'm like, hey, what are you doing over there in the office? <laughs> um, a little bit more of a challenging one but has been a growing space for me that I feel is important is giving you space when you need time because a lot of the ways that I care for you involve me like being with you and being there for you <laughs> but being, but, being on top yeah. of me under me <laughs> touching me but I, it is I important I care for you by touching you the way I want to touch you and be there for you okay. but I'm saying I know, I know. something oh, I'm sorry go ahead but as I was saying something less less I lost my train of thought um <laughs> okay something that i was saying i was growing into this and taking note of it is giving you space because a lot of the ways that i do show up for you happen to be like they're mutually beneficial right and I think that all of them even this one which I think a lot of people may struggle with or have struggled with in the past is the space that's still needed when you are growing a solid unit with someone mm. um so that's been a big thing like today in particular uh, it's one of those days where you're in need of a little bit more support a little bit more patience uh, and what that looks like could be different from time to time, but today it looks more like you need to rest, so I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to leave the room or give you space, or I'm just going to extend, hey, if you need help or you want to ask me something or uh, you need any food or you want me to bring you something, just let me know. Uh, if your needs change, uh, let me know kind of thing, and then just kind of leave you to to your space and your time and your process. And that's been a big one for me that's actually helped me as well uh, because then I can take that space and that time and say, hey, I know that he's processing and he knows that he can come to me if he needs something and he's saying he doesn't need anything right now but the quiet and the space. Um, and we're still in space together. We're just being quiet and I'm not you know, being like clingy and lovey-dovey and mushy, you know, which is still a big thing that happens when it needs to happen. But um, I'm going to take a moment to applaud myself because I feel like I'm, I'm doing better at that and that that's something that's important to you and it's important to me too. We both need space and quiet and time to process the real life things of like being a human being and, you know, having the experience and that's something that is unique to every individual individually but then also there's another layer when it comes to a unit so yeah and making sure he knows he can feel safe and comfortable and saying like hey babe I just need a little bit of space right now or hey I don't really feel like socializing right now and not being like oh dang and taking it personal because it's not it's just a need and um it's a way that he shows me that he loves me by expressing his boundaries and his needs and me. I show him that I love him by respecting and honoring those needs. Hmm. I love it. I will also give you a round of applause. You've been doing, you've been doing better. Um, we, you know, we communicate differently and it's, it's important that we identify the other person's form of communication and then it's also just as important to identify our own personal forms of communication because we've been doing it for so long that it almost doesn't it's, it becomes unrecognizable it's familiar to us so we don't realize the way in which we say things how we say things how long we're talking for um, and then when you add a second person to the mix now there's this exchange and there's a whole new discovery phase um, of our own personal communication patterns and then the patterns that we develop with the other person. So it's always this 
there's like this push and pull type of thing going on, but no, I'm, I applaud you. I know it's, um, I know especially the last couple of days, because I've been just so drained, that uh, I haven't been as socially reactive. Um, Jinji and I, we, we communicate pretty often, like a lot throughout the day. We spend a lot of time together. And, you know, and that, that works for us. Um, it doesn't have to work for everybody, but it works for us. But there's also like, there's a medium. So the way Jinji communicates is different, very different from the way I communicate. She <laughs> has a lot on her mind, right? So she, she speaks what's on her mind and it's up to me to acknowledge that she has a lot on her mind and how her brain works and how there's just stuff, stuff going, 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 um, to provide that space for her to relinquish what is on her mind in a safe manner, right? In a safe space. Um, in that same respect, when she was talking about me placing boundaries, when there's too much relinquishing of those thoughts and ideas that I can sit there and be like, look, I hear you. Even after a whole couple minute rant or whatever, it's like at the end, it's like, I don't want, I, I begin by always saying, I hear you recapping a little bit of what she's saying and then I then I simply state I can't handle that right now or you know my mind is elsewhere or I'm socially drained which is you know something I'm realizing it's like I can I'm I'm be I'm being drained with the, uh, certain interactions and not just with Genji but it's also work related and this related and that related so it's me setting boundaries all all around but um but it's never a boundary with you know, with a locked door, you know what I mean? She can always come in, and she does, and she uh, she enters in, and she's like, hey, mom. Um, but it also works vice versa, but it's different, right? I might have this type of boundary, but she might have a, another type of boundary. Yeah. I haven't discovered <laughs> boundaries yet because <laughs> she just can't seem to get enough, but, you know, it's cool, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I applaud you as well. Mm -hmm. I applaud you. you as well. Um, the ways in which you feed into me, there, there are many, there are many, uh, a lot of ways that I didn't really quite recognize that were like needs of mine, mm. right? And I don't even know if they're needs, but they're just, they're like things like, oh, wow, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. No, that's really nice. Um, maybe this goes off on a little bit of a tangent side story thought pattern of mine but this is why I hate the concept of love languages hmm. I despise them because it puts you in a box it, it 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 puts you in a mental box that if you receive or if you decide you take some arbitrary test and you decide to believe that you receive love in this particular way then that shuts the door for somebody to come in and and provide love to you in a different way and actually receive it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, if I just yeah. believe, oh, I, I receive love by, you know, I don't know, quality time. Mm. But it's like, yeah, but I have a different version of quality time. And then what if you decided you wanted to come in and, and give me, you know, touch? And I'm like, no, yeah, but I don't receive it like that. Like, mm. quality time, but don't touch me. But it's I don't like, think it's that extreme. I understand it's not that extreme. what I'm you're just saying. Drawing the contrast. Just drawing the contrast. I believe it puts you in a box and it does not allow you to be open to receiving different ways that other people may show you your love. And I'm just talking strictly about the concept of the love languages, five love language structure that, think, you know, was practiced and goes around. I think that, um, as I was saying, um... It's, I don't think that it is that extreme, and I, I hear what you're saying, and I think that people shouldn't structure or put themselves in boxes on that front. But I also feel that, based on experiences, people may lean into certain ones more um, and say, oh, I can identify that I like quality time, or I can identify that 
I like touch or whatnot, but I don't think they should close themselves off to experiencing the others because I believe that we need all of the love languages and that we experience them in different ways and there is an infinite way that you can express a love language. Like this is a love language right now, us doing this video and and like that's that's a form of quality time. You've gifted me with food to to like provide nutrients to, to my body. Um, we got these roses from the garden and the rose was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna drop my petals and now, you know, that's there. So it's like, there are infinite love languages and it's just up to us and our perception of how we decide to receive them. And I agree with you, we shouldn't box ourselves off to receiving other forms. And also we, um, I think it's important to be receptive that based on some people's experiences, they may not have ever experienced the other ones, so they're not sure how to lean into that. Um, which kind of ties back into us where we are constant, constantly learning and growing. And as you said, you're working on identifying needs or desires that you may have, and you have discovered some. And I myself am learning different ways to receive and you're expanding on receiving care. Um, I can say that I can identify um, a moment yesterday that occurred that we were both, we both shared a moment of joy and like laughter and just love with. About. Yeah. Do you want to share it? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, he usually drives, uh, he usually drives us pretty much everywhere because he's awesome and he um you said something to me once you're like it was about being a protector and and duty and I really appreciated that however I drive sometimes um you know just so he doesn't have to all the time and because sometimes you know it's nice to sit in the passenger seat um so I drove to our outing yesterday and there was this moment uh, where we unlocked the door and I just had a, I unlocked the door and I had just like a thought. I was like, what if I just open the door for him? So I did open the door for him. And we, <laughs> we both looked at each other and he was like, oh, wow. And I just like burst out laughing. And then he sits, he like sits down. He's like, I feel like I have to cross my legs now. And then I close the door for him too. I'm laughing all the way around to the car. And he was like, that was a first. Like, you gave me a first. And that was a big deal for me. And it was also just a really small moment that was very special for both of us. And so, you know, he extends that courtesy to me. I know that there are some people that just assume that that's expected. But then on the other side of things, that's something he's never experienced. Um, so it brought me a lot of joy to be able to provide that to him. And then... It was just fun for the both of us, and like that's a love language. That's just like a little thought. Like, what if I did this, and then I did it, and yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it was a shock to me. I was walking up to the, like, to the car as we were approaching, and she like, like I saw her going for the handle. I was like, is she doing what I think she's doing? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, get the hell out of here for real. She opened the door, and I was like, kind of, kind of struck. I was like, wow, so this is what it feels like. <laughs> I had to take a moment. I kind of climbed into the car, and in, in my mind, as I'm going to the car, I'm like, is she going to shut the door for me, too? And then she went and shut the door, and it was just like, it was complete. I had, to, I had to lean the seat back. I had to cross my legs. And I think I sat cross-legged, leaned back the entire drive, you drive did. home. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Almost feeling the type of way. Yeah. That's um, special. Yeah. Yeah. So just like that, like discovering new ways to uh, express. Mm -hmm. um, I guess when it comes to love languages, and I put that in air quotes because it's just a term that someone coined. It's just a term. Yeah. Someone's like, it's a love language. But, um, but there's infinite, right? There's infinite ways to, to really communicate something like that. Um, and in that same respect, the way that Jinji communicates her love to me, um, 
the way that I communicate my love to her is drastically different. It's just, it's just not even, not even remotely the same. And in the beginning, I don't know if you know this, this might come as news to you, but in the beginning, <laughs> I, um, I did like compare in the sense of, oh, she's showing me this affection, she's touching me this, this, that, and the other, right? And I'm like, I'm not very much that way. And I felt maybe I need to start doing that so that she feels like she's being loved and, and this, that, and the other. But mm. I, I had, I had like a struggle because I'm like, that's not how I communicate it. Like I communicate it by, I am gonna drive and I'm, I, I'm gonna drive us from here and there to make sure that you and I get to where we need to go and then get home safely because that's the mission, right? That's my responsibility as a protector. As a protector, I am making sure that, you know, the, the door is absolutely locked. I'm making sure that, um, you know, all, all whatever needs are being handled when they come up and then also foreseeing what needs that may need to be done in the future and, and planning for the objectionable structure of things. It's like structure, 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 mm. right? And then on the emotional, the more, um, I guess, yeah, on the emotional side of things, the caressing, the, the yeah, I do that here and there, but it's usually gingy. That's, that's how she kind of moves. That's how she operates. Me, I'm like, all right, she gave me this love. Now I'm going to go into the office. I'm going to produce and I'm going to try to build, not try, I'm going to build for us so that it comes back to her full circle. Mm -hmm. I think you are affectionate as well. And you're, like you said, you're affectionate in your own way. Thank you. And I didn't know that you did that. Yeah, I was comparing. I was like, damn. You don't ever have to do that. No, and I, I, I stopped doing that because <laughs> I realized that we just, we move differently. Mm -hmm. Oh, another nice thing um, that you did, the uh, the notes. I'm, I'm, I have a nice collection of notes that she's given me. I went to work a couple couple nights ago, and there's this, like, I thought there was only one note, <laughs> but there was a note that was, like, in the, in, in the fork. Like, she put a note in the fork, and then there was a note inside like the bag of nuts and then there was a note inside one of the food containers that has like a little compartment that was like a little note i was like there's mad notes here i don't know <laughs> why she felt the need but it was cool it was well received so i take the notes and i save them no. it's fun because it's like i know that those nights are hard for you and i want to give you little pick-me-ups even when i'm not there and i I don't know if you do this, but when I read, like I read our texts or I read notes, I read them in your voice or I read them in that person's voice. And so I'm like, well, maybe he can hear me when he reads this. And then, you know, it's fun for me because I get to think about, are you cold? Yeah, I'm freezing. That thing is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hella cold. Oh, yeah, put the blanket on. But I. Are you cold? I'm okay. But you about to go and... But I am. <laughs> <laughs> that blanket. Oh. But yeah, um, it's just it's just nice. And I, I just imagine you experiencing joy when you get to see them. And so that's why I like to do that. Because, you know, I don't do it every day. Um, but when I do, it's like I feel moved to in this moment. So here's mm. that. And then going back to what you were saying about like how I move it's interesting because I've never been in a relationship where I felt comfortable expressing the ways that I do express with you so mm. it is it's unique to our experience so the way I move with you comes from the safety I feel with you and so it's like mm. I do get to be physically close to you I do get to affirm you I do get to just like whisper sweet nothings and just like touch you and hug you and like be childish and be weird and it's not like whoa what are you doing <laughs> sometimes it's not <laughs> and then when it is it's like I know that you're not it's not something of offense it's just like okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
So, yeah, it's cool. It's unique. Um, it's new, unique to our experience. Yeah, and I guess it has to be unique because, like I had said earlier, um, it, it's like a whole new discovery phase mm -hmm. of... Yeah, we communicate one way, then we have to rediscover how we communicate when there's another person involved. Mm -hmm. And well. I think you kind of, over time as well, warmed up and fell into your own comfortability with the different types of senses. Um, whereas you do, you work, and I understand why you do go into the office, or I understand why you do, you know, drive consistently, or the things that you do that are more than just a surface level. Oh, he's driving or he's he's going to do this. You know, it's like it's there's depth to that because you're a very deep person. So I received that. And then I also notice and see you falling into a comfortable space with, oh, I'm going to extend a caress or like I want to hug you or I want to kiss you all over your face or whatever. You know, it's like you do that. Yeah, I do do that. Oh. It's the ratio. The ratio is, <laughs> is, is different, but I do do that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it is important to, to feed into each other. And, um, you know, it's, it's a privilege to be fed into, right? It's like, let's not take that for granted. On the other side of things, it is a privilege to be able to feed into someone. You know, it's not always that giving is not necessarily a giving to that person solely and exclusively. You're also giving for you. You're giving to that person for you. And if y'all remember from episode two, we were talking about the selfishness. It's like when I feed into Jinji in the ways that I know how, um, I'm doing that for me first and for her second and third she's receiving it on the front end and vice versa when she feeds into me um she's feeding into me and i'm receiving it and in, innately i know that she's feeding into me for her so that i can then give back to her fills my cup so that i can fill her cup fills my cup so i can fill her i can fill her cup so she can fill my cup blah 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 this mm -hmm. is what it is mm-hmm if you haven't watched episode two, we'll wait. Go watch. Yeah, we'll put it up here in the in the top left corner. Oh, I, I gotta learn how to do that, but <laughs> <laughs> we're figuring it out. We ain't at, at, we ain't at, at episode ten yet. <clears throat> by episode ten, we gonna have it down pat. Mm -hmm. Down pat. We looking at by episode ten, we gonna have a thousand subscribers. Ooh, I know, right? That's big. <laughs> hey, shoot! I mean. Pie in the sky, let's go. Pie in the sky. I don't even know if it's so, so much pie in the sky. Like Not really. no. we've been kind of looking at our analytics here and there. Um, I've been looking at them here and there, and you know, there's a lot of things that, especially in the the hashtagging, um, there's a lot of things that we haven't been utilizing yet. Mm -hmm. Also, we also haven't been really pushing the the content of the videos so much on our other platforms, which is something that we've discussed. Um, it's not a sole focus. Again, goal number one is to get to 10 episodes. Um, and then after that, it's, you know, what systems do we have in place uh, to really push it? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we're creating an asset. And, um, and that in and of itself is a love language to me. Mm -hmm. And I think that also speaks to what you were saying before, doing this in front of the camera. It's, um, it's an expression of love. Mm -hmm. And then also, on my end of things, it helps like help other people. Hopefully, it's like we're learning, and then just showing people that, because that's initially what we said that the channel was for. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah, and it kind of cycles also into something that we talked about in one of our meetings um, about. Uh, it was one of the first meetings, the overlap in the workspace. So mm. there's likely to be another video where we focus pretty heavily or solely on what overlap in the workspace looks like for us. Um, but this is another, or overlap, oh, palpable. Yeah, yeah, palpable, like you could palpate how annoying, palpable. how, how, how annoying, 
annoyed, touch oh. how annoyed I am at the that fact that like the tangible. video cut off and we kept going and we lost like 30% of the video. So now we're back. That's okay. So, do you want to tell them what you informed me? So cameras, DSLRs, mirrorless cameras that take pictures that are not camcorders, they have a time limit on the recording, 29 minutes and 59 seconds. If they go above that, they're breaking regulatory rules um, that are protected by companies that make camcorders, actual video cameras that don't take pictures. So while we were recording, it went above that and stopped recording. Now, in my mind, I'm like, if you know that as a DSLR or mirrorless camera maker, why don't you have a recording light on the front mm. that goes on and off to let them know, hey, you hit the 29 minute, 59 second mark, like whatever. Anyway, so now we're back. Yeah. Um, Gingy wanted to do a closing. Yeah. So essentially just... Just to let you guys know what would happen and also to make it easier for him in the after editing process because usually we just say, you know, bye and we'll see you guys next week, um, which we did, but it did get cut off. We were really in the flow. We had some good juice and... It's all gone. I guess it was for us. It's not gone. It's in our hearts. But it's in our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not gone. It's in our hearts. But yes, it's, it's not on camera. <laughs> okay that's the end of episode five and we'll see you next week yeah thanks for tuning in bye peace